Silver absolutely smashed this morning, and we've got a lot more to talk about. I have a few things that may just make your skin crawl, like how much you are going to be paying in interest over the next 10 years. You will be shocked by that. But also, we're going to talk about some interesting Costco insights. You've been hearing it all. We're not going to talk about Costco selling gold, Costco selling silver. We've covered that ad nauseum. So is everybody else. But I've got a big, keen, breaking insight that I want to share with you about what is happening with Costco and why that could spell big, big changes for the price of silver and the price of gold. And we've got some good news. Don't worry. Good news about the silver price and gold price, but let's start with this smash that we've had this morning in the silver price. Have you noticed this over the last few days? Up and down, up and down. Was there manipulation? I want to go straight to a chart and I want to show you what happened and why we may be just a little bit suspicious, okay? Here's our current silver chart. Let's go ahead and refresh this and take a look at what happened. And this is the live chart of silver. Right now, we're down 74 cents per ounce. Wow, is all we can say, right? That's a one-minute chart. Let's go to a one-hour chart. Here we are, guys. This was uh, Friday. Was it Friday where we had the big, massive smash down? Price came back. Price came back. Price came back. Now, this most recent smash down really started right here. So let's take a look at this. That's April 16th. At about 2 a.m., so at 2 in the morning, they basically knocked the silver price down from 28.80 per ounce all the way down to 28.30, 50 cents per ounce within a one-hour period. If you look at the upper left-hand corner of this chart, okay, so you see that big red bar right below where the plus sign is? That was 2 in the morning, 16th of April, 2 a.m., but what's interesting I just want to point this out, and I'm not a guru in this regard. Well, I want you to look up here where it says VOL, okay? So let's go back to that one-hour period that occurred. Looks like there were 8,500 contracts of silver. Now, somebody please correct me if I'm wrong. I've always told you I'm not the guy that knows the ins and outs and the intricacies of the COMEX and the LBMA. And, you know, I know what happens. But what I see there is 8,000 contracts. At 1,000 ounces of silver, each contract represents 1,000 ounces. That would be 8 million ounces of silver. And that's not really extraordinary, right? Because if we look back a little bit earlier on this chart, we see even crazier numbers. But 8,000, again, right next to VOL, that would be 8 million ounces of silver trading in one hour in the middle of the night, right? And that would basically represent... 1% of the entire year's mining uh, silver production. I mean, it's absolutely insane what goes on in these paper markets, right? Look back here. Look at this. When we had the the last big beatdown on Friday, how many? 20. Would that be 20 million ounces, right? Remember this one where we went from almost $30 per ounce, what, on Friday, all the way back down to 28. So, guys, I know it's stressful. I know it's no fun. Uh, you know, one day up, one day down. But I want you to remember one big key thing. And that is when we look at the silver price right now, it still starts with the number two and then comes the number eight, $28 per ounce. Not that bad. Hey, I want to tell you real quickly, some exciting news. Speaking of silver and Bonanza silver, I just want to run over to Fortuna Silver, uh, channel sponsors, website, they had big news out. And it's really, this is an interesting story behind this I want to share with you. Uh, But they had big news out regarding uh, silver exploration at their Mexican mine, the San Jose mine. Uh, It says, Paul Whedon, senior vice, these are massive silver drill holes that they announced at this Mexican silver mine. Again, the San Jose mine uh, from Fortuna Silver drilling on the Yesi vein. And I'm going to tell you an interesting story about this Yesi vein, as I understand it. Since the initial discovery hole in August of 2023 has continued to establish well-defined system with recent results, 
1,327 grams per ton, silver equivalent over an estimated true width of three meters, okay? Look at this number, 1,036 grams per ton, silver equivalent over an estimated true width of eight meters. These are huge, huge numbers. But what makes this so interesting on several levels, first, Fortuna had announced uh, that they were planning on possibly shutting this mine down towards the end of this year. Uh, and I asked Jorge Ganoza, right? And he, it sounded like there were two, two things that could change the situation uh, with their Mexican silver mine. One being the silver price, right? I think when they announced this, the silver price was closer to $23, $24 per ounce. But he also talked about that when you when you open a silver mine, uh, the first people who show up are the uh, geologists, the people exploring for silver. And the last people that should leave, if I remember this correctly, should be the geologists, those people exploring so, for silver. So this is very interesting because I think it changes possibly the dynamics of what Fortuna is doing in Mexico with silver. These are some massive big numbers uh, now we have a higher silver price, which makes mining more economic, obviously. And we have the uh, the discovery of some of what could turn into a great, great resource. Uh, what's also very interesting about this is the Essie vein, if I have this correct, is named after one of the geologists who, who said, we should really try drilling over here. And I believe her name was Yessie. Uh, we should really try drilling over here, really try drilling over here. And I, I think she a, was a younger geologist. They said, OK, fine, we'll give it a shot. And they discovered this, uh, what is turning into a very impressive uh, potential silver resource down there at their uh, Mexican operations. Also, I just want to mention they've taken big non-cash write-offs on their Mexican silver operations in previous quarters. As I understand it, as an old accountant, they basically... Um, had written off most of their Mexican silver assets. So if this does uh, indeed prolong the life of this mine, who knows where it could go? It's all kind of a bonus at this point. So uh, good job, Fortuna. Keep up the good work. And let's move on here, guys. You can learn more about Fortuna at fortunasilver.com. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. I know. I understand. It's been difficult being a silver and gold investor these last few days. Let's run out real quickly and just get a quick update on the price. What's going on? Okay, so gold down 14, but we're going to refresh this. Gold down 16, silver down 90 cents per ounce, right? No fun. I understand. But also, also, let's remember, right? $28 silver, $2,300 plus gold. We would be we, we would have been rejoicing just four or five months ago if we'd known that. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down because we like to have fun here in the basement. This is what I think of. Remember this? You these were called weeble toys, which were around when we were little. You could push them, you could throw them. They always landed right side up. And lately, that's what we're seeing in the silver and gold market. It gets pushed down, comes back up. It feels like lately it's a situation where away today. Who knows? Maybe there is going to be a coordinated attack on the silver price. We don't know, right? But I believe that we're still in a very bullish environment for the silver price and gold price, and the dollar is being exposed, okay? Right now, right now, really, who's buying all the silver? Who's buying all the gold? Because it's not the retail investment community. It's not the ETF, the SLV and the GLD. Right now, really, the only people that are buying, and they're buying a lot, thank God, are the Chinese, the other Eastern countries, right? The central banks. Guys, when other people wake up, and we're going to talk about that occurring a little bit later in this video, a big key insight that I want to ask you if you're seeing this as well. But when other people start to wake up, and it's not just China buying everything, China's like, sure, send us your silver, send us your gold. We'll take it. Here's your paper dollars back. Enjoy them. We, we enjoyed holding them, but we don't want them anymore. We'll take your silver. We'll take your gold. That's what's happening right now. I wrote this out for you. I want to read this about what we're seeing 
I think this sums up exactly what we're seeing right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna read it for you with emphasis. I forgot to turn Susie on. Everybody say hi to Susie. <laughs> Susie's walkie-talkie. She's back. Yes. And while I'm saying that, oh, there you go. Hopefully you heard that. She said hello, everyone. Um, but let's dig in right now into what and, and what is the big story, okay? These last few days. Okay, yesterday, the financial world witnessed a seismic shift as the dollar, oil, and gold surged. Stocks and bonds plummeted. But what ignited this frenzy of activity? Gold and silver, the timeless safe haven assets, soared in response to mounting geopolitical tensions. Is, is, is Israel gearing up to strike Iran? We're going to dig into that in a little bit. Scary situation. Speculations about world war loom large, sending shockwaves through the precious metals markets. Investors are on edge as geopolitical risks intensify. But what's fueling this meteoric rise of gold and silver? According to leading analyst, central bank actions are pushing gold and silver to unprecedented heights. Bank of America has forecasts now reaching as high as $3,000 per ounce while UBS predicts a staggering $4,000 per ounce gold price. They are saying that could be a year, year and a half, or maybe a little further out. But guys, $4,000 gold? Where do you think the silver price will be at $4,000 gold? Where, where do you think the silver price will be? I'm just feeling $68 per ounce. Okay? Even Goldman Sachs sees gold soaring to $2,700 per ounce. The stage is set for gold's ascent. Geopolitical uncertainty coupled with central bank support creates the perfect storm for precious metal investors, not to mention stagflation, which we are in, a stagnant economy with inflation, and it's really going to get ugly. Investors are flocking to gold and silver as a hedge against inflation and global turmoil. When I say that, I mean the big central banks and the eastern... We don't necessarily have that happening yet in the West, okay? As the world teeters on the brink of uncertainty, one thing remains clear. The allure of gold and silver shines brighter than ever before, okay? So that's what I think is happening. Geopolitical. Now, we got to remember, and what happened yesterday, okay? What happened, it was very interesting what went on in the market yesterday with silver and gold. Very, very interesting. Because I follow the silver price. You follow the silver price. We follow the gold price. I also, and a lot of you, I have a lot of money invested into precious metal mining stocks. So I also follow what goes on in the precious metal mining stocks. Yes, right? Like I mentioned before, companies like Fortuna, channel sponsor. I have a lot of my money invested in them. First mining gold, channel sponsor. I have a lot of my own money invested in them. I will only take sponsorships from companies which I own. I eat my own cooking, right? I put my money where my big mouth is. So I follow. Yesterday was strange. We What we saw yesterday was a geopolitical spike in the silver price and gold price, okay? I warned you over the weekend. I thought we would have not a good week in the precious metals. I hoped I was wrong, and I am often wrong, but we had a spike right? Those spikes oftentimes don't have legs, okay? They don't hurt. Nothing wrong with it. It's fun. Yeah, sure. I'm like you. I'd rather see gold up $40 an ounce, silver up 99 cents. Not a day like today where it's down darn near a buck per ounce, but that's what we had go on yesterday, okay? The dollar went up, oil went up, and gold and silver went up, okay? Spiking, spiking, spiking. But what is going on in the world. Let's run out real quickly and see what they're saying. This is what happened yesterday. Israel readying an imminent attack on Iran as airlines cancel flights in the region. I'm going to have a quick drink of coffee. You have a drink of coffee too and smile for one second. All right, let's just read these highlights here very quickly. Um, Middle East braces, I'll read through these super speed. Middle East braces for Isra Israeli retaliation attack on Iran 
after Israel War Cabinet meets, Israeli Air Force says it has completed preparation and that an attack is imminent. Okay, U.S. officials, and again, this all came out yesterday, tell the Wall Street Journal, they believe that Israel will launch an anti-Iran operation today. Okay, I don't think that happened as of yet, okay? Uh, The IDF chief said that Iranian missile and drone attack on Israel will be met with a response. So guys, let's, we'll stop there, but this is basically Israel potentially going all out war with Iran. This is scary. This is, this does deserve a spike in the gold and silver price. And and we aren't rooting for it. Remember, we're talking about human lives here. I will say that every time I talk about what goes on. But is it other places in the Middle East? Let's look at this. A little more recent news. U.S. says over 90 missiles and drones were launched from Yemen in the past 48 hours. So we're not talking about Israel. We're not talking about Uh, Iran. Now we're talking about uh, Yemen. New statements from the Pentagon issued Monday say that the Houthis have fired over 90 ballistic missiles and drones, most of which were intercepted by U.S. and allied forces over the past 48 hours once the Iranian attack kicked off in the overnight hours of Saturday. So my question is this, how can we even say, are we at war? Hold on. There we go. (laughs) We're going to talk about are we at war, but first I want to talk to you 10 seconds. Thank you for being here. Thank you for giving me your time on a beautiful Tuesday morning. It's a big deal. You're smart. You're intelligent. You want to dig in. You've joined a great community. We like to refer to ourselves as basement dwellers. We get together, talk about silver and gold. Please give this a thumbs up. Super chats are always Super appreciated. Help support the channel. Help support the family. Uh, and you can subscribe. That's free. How, now let's. Do you think we're at war? I mean, let's think about this. I want you to. I want you to. I want you to ponder this for a moment. Are we at war? Right. We're supplying. Well, let's, let's go to Europe quickly. We're supplying money. We're supplying supplies to the Ukrainians who are fighting against the Russians. This is crazy. I mean, think about it, okay? Again, the analogy that I like to use, right? If you have a neighbor you don't like, right? And and you got you and your neighbor, next door neighbor, get into a really vile snowball fight, okay? You're whizzing them. You're making them those snowballs as hard as you can, and you're throwing them at him, and you're hiding behind the big oak tree in your front yard, and he's throwing them back at you. You really want to hurt each other, right? Okay? And then, let me just throw this out there, the neighbor on the other side of your neighbor starts to make snowballs and supply them to your neighbor. So now he has twice the snowballs to throw at you. Would you consider yourself to be at war with just your neighbor, but also, or your neighbor and your neighbor's neighbor who's supplying him with snowballs? I mean, to me, uh, it's a very scary situation that's unfolding in the world right now. Europe, War with Russia, Middle East, war with Iran. I mean, how can you, you know, well, 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 Israel, we'll help defend you. Uh, We're not going to help you attack, but we'll help defend you. And I'm not, this is not a political statement. I'm just saying from the perspective of is the United States, I think it's a question we need to ask ourselves are we at war? Are some people have said, not, I'm not proposing this, but some people have said, that world war has already started. I mean, does it kind of sort of feel that way, you know? And what's the biggest, best safe haven asset that anyone, I'm going to ask you, this is a quiz, quiz time. (laughs) You better get this one right, Buttercup, or you're fired from the basement. You're out of here. Susie's going to put you on the list. (laughs) Don't mess with Susie, trust me. Okay, but what is the timeless best asset to invest in during times of geopolitical uncertainty, also known as war. Hmm? Time for your answer. Yeah, silver and gold. Okay, what happened? Let me just throw this out there. What happened over the weekend when the Iranian uh, attacks on Israel first were launched? All I'm going to say is some of these other uh, electronic assets that like to fancy themselves as the new form of gold and silver 
didn't fare so well. That's just a fact. I'm not anti-Bitcoin, okay? I'm not anti-crypto. I'm just telling you a fact that crypto had a very, very, very abrupt downturn uh, and, and gold and silver, as we could see from some of the uh, assets that were trading over the weekend, some of the assets that track gold and silver went straight up, whereas Bitcoin went straight down. Again, I'm not anti, I'm, 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 I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about our crypto friends. We share a lot of common beliefs. I'm just pointing out the facts. Okay. Where were we basement dwellers? All 560. Maybe we can get to 700 people today. That'll be exciting. Okay. Um, Ukraine. Oh, okay. Now, now it's time for you to sit back in time for you to be shocked. This is shocking. We know we know the dollar's going down, baby. The big thing that's going to drive the price of gold and silver, you can talk about all these symptoms, all this stuff, is the value of the dollar going down. But I've got some news for you that will make your skin crawl. Let's go check this out right now, okay? Let's go to, where did it go? Uh-oh, uh-oh. We'll just go here first. This is not the information. This will... This will get your skin moving. This isn't going to get your skin crawling. But it's been a few days. Let's take a look. Oh, the U.S. national debt continues to go up. I remember just a few weeks ago, we were at $34 trillion. Let me remind you, a trillion is a million times a million. Take a deep breath. Think about that. One trillion is equal to a million times a million. That, so $34 trillion is like $34 million times a million. I, un, I, you can't even think about it. Okay. Let's go over to the secret window. This is not what's going to make your skin crawl. What is new at the secret window on the U.S. debt clock? Looks like they're taking us out to Twitter. Freedom of expression, liberty, and tyranny. Let us dare to read, think, speak, and write. Looks like that's, who is that? Is that George Washington or Thomas? I don't know. I don't really get that one. Anyway, let's get our skin crawling like I promised you. And we are going to go here. Be ready, okay? If, if you have a weak stomach, you may not want to watch this segment. I'm going to warn you. Go go watch, like Coin Shop Chris said, go watch Roadrunner cartoons. This is America's interest payments reach $1 trillion. That's not, that. now your skin's starting to move, but it's not crawling. And I'll not only will remind you now when it's crawling. So look at this chart. U.S. interest payments reach one trillion. Now, I mean, it's really, really sad. Um, sorry, my neighbor is calling me on the phone there. One trillion starting in 1950. Look at up, 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 up. Now there's the pandemic. Okay, so we were at about what 500 billion. And since the pandemic, our interest payments, this is not the debt. This is not the 34 trillion, 600 billion we saw earlier. This is the interest that that, love, that that level of debt accrues, okay, is up to 1 trillion. Now, be prepared. <laughs> Quickly here, overview. This is, I'm going to tell you when your skin crawls. The annual interest payments on the U.S. national debt since 1947 and that data came to us from the Federal Reserve, okay? America's growing debt bill, you know that, okay? I think it's the actual debt levels going up by a trillion dollars every hundred days. But it says here, the cost of paying for America's national debt crossed $1 trillion mark in 2023, growing by more than double over the last decade. Here, this, okay, take a deep breath. This is where your skin crawls, okay? Debt outlook over the next 10 years. I cannot believe this. Somebody check these people, please. The U.S. government is projected to spend a historic 12.4 trillion, okay, next 10 years, 12.4 trillion on interest payments. Just interest. This is just the interest payments. This is the part your skin is going to crawl, amounting to about $37,100 per American. I mean, that's $40,000 per American. When does this catch up with us, guys? I mean, that is becoming significant, significant numbers. Uh, for perspective, in 2023, the U.S. spent more on debt payments 
than it did on Medicaid. And it wastes a bunch of money on Medicaid as well, one of its largest expenses. So this is what we're dealing with right now. This is what silver and gold investors know, right? The dollar, unfortunately, right? This thing is not in good shape. That's what we're dealing with right now. And, you know, uh, as we move into the coming months, quarters, years, and decades, the situation's only getting much, much worse. Let's talk about Costco briefly. And okay, the, <laughs> are you getting costco out? I am. I'm tired of hearing about the fact that Costco is selling silver and gold. It, okay. But, but there's a big, 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 massive key thing that we need to realize that's going on now as a result of this. So this is, this will be the, uh, uh, let's see if I can find it. Where the heck did it go? Uh-oh, maybe my computer's font uh, is, is actually sick of it. Hold on here. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Where the heck did that go? Okay, here we go. All right. Am I on screen share? No. All right, let's pull that up. Last time, last one, Inside Edition. Isn't that like a um, like an entertainment channel or something? Like where they talk about celebrities, Costco selling gold bars for twenty three hundred dollars each. Blah 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 blah. I saw this yesterday. I thought now even Inside Edition, every media outlet in the world has run this Costco, uh, this Costco selling gold and silver story. Gold is historically a hedge against inflation. Did you know that Americans are very worried at home, which is probably one of the reasons they're at Costco to begin with. Okay, that's a good point. All right, so let's come back here. Let's talk about what's really going on and why this could make a big difference for you and me as a silver and gold investor. Okay, I'm going to read from my notes. Okay, every media outlet on the planet has recovered this story. But what is very important, okay, what is super important about this? Right? My mom asked me the other day. She's like, did you hear Costco selling gold? Um, the very nice woman who I work, I have a little job I do in the evening. She said, did you hear Costco selling gold, right? And I'm like, yeah, we've been talking about it in Ron's basement for like six months. You know, every, I, this is the big key, key thing. And I, we said this, right? We predicted this, basement dwellers, five, six months ago when this fir story first broke, when we were way ahead of the curve. We said it was like a crock pot. Who likes to cook in a crock pot? <laughs> anyway, right? That that very beginning, that, that those first gold bar sales, that it, it just that was just the beginning, turning on the crock pot. It was just heating up. And I think it's starting to simmer. Okay. We're starting to see a little ba boom, ba boom. Because everybody, are you hearing? Are people asking you? Are you hearing like in general conversation? Oh, Costco selling gold. Costco selling gold. Okay, uh, but but here's the thing. Okay, here's what's very interesting about this is that as more people become more and more aware, and people are buying gold at Costco to protect themselves against inflation, we've not seen anything yet. Okay, um, and and I ask these people, and I encourage you when people say, "Have you heard Costco selling gold?" Say. Do you know why so many people are buying it? And, and, and that's the next phase. That's the next thing that we need to see is that people start to wake up and realize, like you have and I have, that people are buying gold. People are buying silver to protect themselves against the ravages, the absolute ravages of inflation. Now, there's been some troubles. I know with silver, there were a couple articles that came out, people buying silver from Costco and complaining about the packaging. What I recommend to people when they ask me about this cost, I said, if I were going to buy gold, if I were going to buy silver, I would buy it from a specialist, right? Costco's great at selling bulk packages of toilet paper. I know people love Costco, good meat, blah, 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 whatever. But if I were going to buy gold or silver, I would buy it from a specialist. Um, and let's go run out and say thank you. Speaking of a specialist. Uh-oh, hold on, guys. Technical difficulties. All right, let's just check and 
let's get the bad news today. We're not going to hold this again. Okay, silver, only down 75 cents. <laughs> gold, 852. Okay, we're doing okay, guys. But I would buy my gold. I would buy my silver. I would buy my platinum group metals from a specialist. And that specialist that I go to is PIMBEX, P-I-M-B-E-X. Okay, that's all they do is sell precious metals. They know how to package it up really nice, trust me. But what's even more important, right, is that you can trust them uh, in that their prices are always, always ultra competitive. Hey, look, you need to figure that out for yourself. You can run out to their website here, pinbex.com. Uh, do your own due diligence, right? Shop around. I always encourage people, but I think you'll find what I found, and that is Pimbex really does. Where is the box? There's the box. Pimbex checks all the boxes. And if you ever decide you want to convert part or all of an IRA to precious metals, they can help you out with that as well. All right, guys, we got more. We got more. We got more. Okay. Um, you want to hear about some crazy? Here, let's <laughs> let's just talk about all the crazy gold predictions that are out there right now. I put this together for you. Um, and where is it? Darn it. Hold on here. Hold on. Not that. Not it. Not it. Not it. Where'd it go? Not it. Not it. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Thanks for bearing with me. Here we go. This was an article from a from a website called Moomoo. Okay. I want to give them some credit here. Uh, but it was one of those websites. You ever have that happen where you like you go to a website and you're looking at it and those things pop up on the screen? And they make it darn near impossible to find where the X is for you to close it. Like, hey, we got a special offer for you. Blah, 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 blah. But you can usually find it. It's hidden somewhere like the X to X out of it. So you can get back to what you really came there for. This one had one that popped up and I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to X out of it. There must have been a way. But I finally said, you know what? I'm just going to copy what I can and give them credit. Okay, let's talk about what the big guys are saying about silver and gold. Okay, let's talk about, we got UBS, Citigroup, Bank of America, uh, and I think there's even more. We're going to talk about JP Morgan briefly as well. Uh, Goldman Sachs <laughs> has stated uh, that risk-averse sentiment will drive gold prices to soar with the institution raising its year-end gold price forecast from $2,300 to $2,700 per ounce. Analysts at Goldman Sachs noted in, their, noted in their report that gold tends to outperform other assets during rate-cutting cycles. They pointed out that although rate cuts have not yet arrived, gold is expected to continue its exceptional performance by central bank demand. Concerns over the U.S. fiscal conditions, which we just looked at earlier, you're going to be paying almost $40,000 in interest over the next 10 years. Congratulations. Okay. Hey, guys, Susie just chimed in. We have 200 likes. So that, that's what Goldman Sachs says, 27. Are, but wait, there's more. And right now, you know what we're going to do? You know what we're going to do? We're going to ring the cowbell. Okay. Because we got 200 thumbs up. It's cowbell time. I'll wake up all those guys at Goldman Sachs that are sleeping at their desk. Wake up, boys. It's bell time. Okay, <laughs> UBS. Man, I had a horrible situation last night at a FedEx Kinko store. Um, I went, I had some new signage printed up for my for the mining companies in uh, Fortuna. And thank you, Metal Seer and Kristen, for the super chats. Hey, thank you, Susie. Do you want to say hello to everybody? Come on. <laughs> That's how she greets me in the morning. Hi there, Ron. Great to see you again. Dream come true. Oh, I went to FedEx Kinko's at 7.45 to pick up my uh, two sheets, two things printed. Would have taken two seconds. I get there. They close at 7 o'clock. I'm like, how can a FedEx shipping copy store closed at seven o'clock. So I saw the guy back there. He was in there and I thought, oh, I'll just knock on the door. 
he'll be nice and get my little two things I had printed out. This guy like attacked me. I knocked on the door and he came and he opened the door and he had this like look on his face. He was about our age, about 54. And he's like, and I said, Hey, uh, I said, can I, can I just get my, I have like two things I had printed. And he was like, can you not see on the door? It clearly says seven o'clock we close. And can you not see it's on the internet and it's on our phone message as well. We close at seven o'clock. I was like, okay, man, no problem. Uh, sorry to bother you. And uh, I said, by the way, did you know that the Fed in Federal Express is no more federal than the Fed in the Federal Reserve? And he just kind of looked at me funny. All right. Anyway, let's get back to this. Hopefully you guys are seeing the same screen I am. UBS. Okay, this is interesting. $4,000 gold. What does that mean? What did I say? $68 silver. UBS says that considering the expected rate cuts and increased gold demand from central banks, they anticipate gold price may continue to rise. UBS analysts have highlighted retail buying as the next catalyst for the commodity. Amen, UBS. Amen. Right. That's what we're talking about. Guys, we have no retail demand for silver or gold right now, or muted, right? Sure, it goes up and down. But overall, the trend has been a challenging environment uh, for, in the West, retail demand for silver and gold. If it just gets a little bit better. Oh, yes. Okay, Metal Seer gave us a, uh, wow. So Powell's speaking at 1.15 p.m. Eastern. I don't know if that's a scheduled so we'll have to look into that. Uh, if anybody can see, put it in the comments or if it's going to be like an emergency or a whatever. Very interesting. Anyway, look, guys, this is the good news. Everybody smile. Come on, basement dwellers. You can do it. I know it's Tuesday morning. You're putting up with me in the basement, but let's all smile. We have had a strong, think about this. We've had a very strong gold price, right? Records. We've got $28 silver which is good. I'll take it. If I'd have told you that back in February, you'd have been jumping for joy. Let's all jump for joy right now. And it's done that. This is the big critical thing. It's done that in an environment where Western investment has been muted at best, right? Has been subdued. So when it gets better, just a little bit better, it doesn't have to get good. Rick Rule says it. Rick Rule, right? One of the one of the royalty within the silver and gold uh, arena. He says it best. He talked about, I heard him say this about silver, that the beautiful thing about silver is it doesn't have to be loved to do really, really well. It just needs to be a little less hated, okay? It doesn't need to be loved. It's, it, it's, it's in such bad shape. From a uh, from a Western investor perspective, that it just it just needs to be a little bit less hated. It, and that's not us. That's not you. That's us basement dwellers. We love silver, right? Okay. All right. Interesting. Uh, okay. UBS. Uh, let me get here. Let me highlight this so you can all follow along. They've increased their gold price predictions for this year by two hundred fifty dollars per ounce, adjusting their June forecast to twenty three hundred an ounce a figure that's already been surpassed. Yeah, they might want to update that and setting their projections for year end uh, and end of March, 2025 at $2,500 an ounce up from whatever, but uh, here's the, here's the cool part. Furthermore, Newman, are you paying attention? Huh? Furthermore, analysts believe that investors holding gold for a two to three year period Oops, I think I exaggerated that earlier. I said 18 months to two years. I got the two years, right? Could potentially see prices double. Big smile, climbing to over $4,000 per ounce. Yeah, we you heard that right. Over $4,000 per ounce. Let's talk to our friends at Citigroup. Uh, at least the ones who haven't been laid off yet. I think they're laying off like 25,000 people. <laughs> I'm not laughing. That's hard. I, my heart goes out to anybody who got laid off. But 25,000 people, that's like a massive NBA or NHL uh, arena full of people. That's a lot. And those are good paying jobs with good benefits. But that's OK, because Bidenomics is here to save all those people. They can go drive Uber or deliver Burger King to drunk college kids for DoorDash, whatever the case may be. That's the new economy. 
Citigroup analysts have joined their peers at UBS in boosting their gold price targets. Uh, late last week, they increased their zero to three month forecast all the way to $2,400 per ounce. City has noted in recent years, central banks' gold purchases, I don't know which we're, we're sick of, and, the, and they're both great things. I don't mean sick of, are you feeling this way? All you hear when you hear about gold anymore is Costco or central bank gold purchases. How about we start hearing about lines out the door at the local coin shop? How about we start hearing about the online bullion dealers being sold out? That's going to happen, okay? Uh, Bank of America, also known as BOA, has set a target price for gold to reach $3,000 per ounce by 2025. Guys, we're like a uh, third of the way through 2024, pointing out that current macroeconomic factors are favorable for gold. They note that if the Fed cuts rates within the year as anticipated, gold purchasing is likely to expand, potentially pushing gold prices even higher. Okay. And JP Morgan, the latest I could find from them was 2,500. You know, what is this telling us? What is this telling us? Right. Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Bank of America, everybody has sky high gold prices, but what you may be asking, what does that mean for silver? Right. I want you to remember something, guys. I want you to remember something critical about silver and why this is good news. Better, better news for silver. Even better news for silver. I'm sorry, I got to get it out. I, 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 the, the only way I can explain this to you is with the help of some Tonka trucks. Bear with me. This is critical in this really, all joking aside, demonstrates in no uncertain terms why we could get 70, 80, 65, maybe even triple digit silver. But let me grab the Tonka trucks real quick. Okay. This gold-colored truck is the price of gold. I had it written on there, okay? The price of gold, okay? This silver truck is the price of silver. This elastic band in the middle is the gold to silver ratio, which is at all-time highs, right? So here's the gold price. Here's the silver price getting stretched, stretched, right? Right. OK. Now, what happens is and it's still stretched. We're still at about 80. I can feel I, I'm not that strong. I can feel it's hard. Right. This is not there's a lot of tension in that 80 to one gold to silver ratio. But think about this. It's not just standing still because over the last number of months, the gold price, well, it's leaving the screen, has gone to all time highs. And this the gold to silver ratio has moved a little bit, but not a lot. All this tension in this red elastic band, as gold goes, gold's pulling, you know, silver is up to 28, but there's still all that tension. If gold goes to three, 4,000 and this tension gets released, that's what they call a slingshot move in the price of silver, okay? A slingshot. So you can get mad at me. You can say, oh yeah, you're always talking about Oh, guys, we've got breaking news from Silver Susie. Susie, please repeat that again for everyone out there in the in the listening audience. <laughs> Thank you. I like the way you say that. I'll uh, put through my uh, order for what I want for lunch in a few moments. <laughs> I already rang the cowbell, Susie. What were you doing? Why were you not on the live stream? Anyway, in no uncertain terms, that shows you why we could have this massive move in the silver price. I mean, hey, let's go check. According to Silver Susie, right? Uh, the boss upstairs, let's go check that gold and silver price right now. And we'll go to our friends at Pimbex. Let's see what they say. Oh, my gosh. Hey guys, gold is, <laughs> remember this? Where is it? Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. I mean, these metals, the world is waking up. We, I, we, we talked about this. This is massive. 
We talked about it back in December, Basement Dwellers. And for those of you who are new, you're welcome to hear. And we're glad you're here. But a lot of us, long-term basement, we talked about in December that we'd entered a new weather pattern. I, I did ring the cowbell. I think I did. Am I hallucinating? I think I did. You can ask the studio audience. I think they'll agree with me. This is one of those rare times where I'm right about something. Sorry, guys. Susie and I are having a little point of contention. <laughs> I love Susie. Anyway, we talked about this. We talked about it, that we are in a new, a new weather pattern. I didn't ring the cowbell? Let me finish with my weather pattern preaching. We're in a new weather pattern. We're not. Oh, it was? Okay, here, I'm going to ring the bell one more time. Because I even said I was going to wake up the uh, people at the Goldman Sachs. That, that, we talked about this, guys. We talked about we are in a new. It's hard for us. Is it hard for you? Okay. It's okay, guys. And I need to get this through my thick skull too, right? It's okay that we're in a bull market for silver and gold. It's okay. I know today the silver has been a real challenge, right? Gold is, you know, is presenting, is coming back. It's okay. It's okay. And it's going to be an interesting ride. I appreciate you being here. Okay, guys. Thank you. All right. Thanks for the thumbs up. Thanks for the super chats. Thanks for being part of the basement. And I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.